Welcome to PV Magazine Live. This is Christian Roseland, America's editor at PV Magazine, and we're here at the Solar World Installer Summit in Portland, Oregon. I'm joined by Steve Petchus, who's director of operations at Solar World. Steve, thanks for taking the time to talk with me. Christian, very good to be here. Thanks for coming to the summit. My pleasure. So this summit comes at an exciting time. Uh, Solar World is just ramping up production of the 72 cell module production at the Hillsboro facility, very large facility there, both integrated cell and module. Can you tell me why 72 cell modules are a focus for Solar World at this time and why you've dedicated so much capacity to this? Sure, absolutely, Christian. What we have seen in the marketplace is really an evolution over time. Uh, Solar World has perhaps been traditionally known as primarily a residential solution supplier, uh, which would be primarily serviced by 60 cell modules. But really, as the markets evolved, especially in the commercial and utility scale space, what we see is that there's a larger and larger pull. And frankly, when you look at utility and most of commercial now, 72 cell is the dominant product. We really want to be a full solution provider at every part of the industrial application, whether that's in residential, commercial, or utility scale. We heard this message loud and clear from our previous installer summits, from our customers that have been uh, with us for a long time, and we wanted to rise up and meet that request and meet that demand for giving them the product that they need to be able to go after all parts of the market segment that, of course, are great growth opportunities both for us and for all of our distributors and installers. Great. Now, Steve, the other thing that I saw at the factory was I saw a number of, well, I saw the production of five bus bar cells. Now, I have never seen five bus bar PV cells before. Uh, I see them rolling off the lines, and we have here a five bus bar uh, 60 cell module. Can you talk about the choice to go to five bus bars and technically what you're getting out of this? Sure, absolutely, Christian. So what you see with a, with a five bus bar cell, and if you think about the evolution of solar cells over time, uh, going back 10 or even 20 years, there was two bus bar and three bus bar is a very typical solution. But what we find as we move forward in time, and solar world is very much going to be on the forward edge of this, is that as the efficiency of the solar cells increases, as the power of our solar cells increases, we're going to have a relatively larger effect due to the series resistance in the solar module itself. So when you have a higher power cell, you have more watts that you're trying to pull off or more electricity you're trying to get out of your solar cell, you're gonna really start to be more and more challenged by the resistance of the module itself as those solar cells are strung together. So one of the natural things that you wanna do is look for how to reduce that series resistance in your module and a good way to get after that and both cost effective and a good efficiency approach is to increase the number of bus bars. It's basically reducing your series resistance by increasing your cross-sectional area of your circuit uh, for your cells that are wired together in series. So at the end of the day, it's a natural evolution for us based on the fact that we are really pushing power and efficiency in both our 60 and 72 cell format. Great. Now, specifically getting into the, I, there's a couple advantages here. Obviously, you have more points of connection here and, and probably more durability between the cells. Uh, but also, there's that raw evacuation of, of electrons off of the cell. Can you talk specifically about the technical uh, achievements that you've seen? Like, how much of a difference does the five bus bar make? Uh, the, the difference that it makes is really quite significant. You definitely touched on the improved uh, reliability that's going to come. If you think about this smaller uh, uh, wiring that you're using to connect the cells together, that has the, the definite opportunity to make those connections, especially as we do the front to back connection, to be uh, more robust uh, in the long term. But to your point, uh, when it comes down to it, is that, that improvement in the series resistance really is going to help us to take our module products up just with this one change, one full bin class in terms of performance. Very impressive. Now, the other thing that Solar World is known for is the pioneering of passivated emitter rear contact, PERC, uh, technology. And I understand you had a, a strong role to play in the adoption of PERC in, was that 2012 or 2013? Mm -hmm. um, so can you talk a little bit about PERC as a technology and why it was important for Solar World? Absolutely. Uh, when we looked at the evolution of technology, Solar World uh, has always intended to be a high, a high quality, high reliability manufacturer, but also a high efficiency uh, module producer. And when we looked at all of the technology options that are out there, what we saw with Perk is being able to capitalize on some of the mass of innovation that's going on on P-type architectures throughout the industry, whether that's in raw material suppliers, whether that's in equipment suppliers, but really bring our own uh, cell and module know-how to the technology piece to really be able to innovate and have a higher performance cell as compared to a lot of the competition. Specifically what that gives us is it gives us the opportunity for high power, high efficiency performance 
with some of the same cost effectiveness that comes with the mass of the industry innovating as a whole on that P-type architecture as compared to some of the more uh, expensive N-type architectures you're going to see in perhaps an interdigitated, interdigitated back contact cell or some of the other N-type technologies. So really we see it giving us a uh, great opportunity to have uh, the best of both worlds. Right. Now, and SolarWorld invested in Perk at the height of a, a very difficult time in the solar industry. Since that time, Perk has been adopted. I, I'm hard pressed to think of a major crystal and silicon manufacturer uh, that hasn't adopted Perk except the ones that have something like IBC. Why is it that Perk has taken off so strongly in the industry and what are the challenges to developing a Perk process? Uh, the numbers speak for themselves. Uh, as you mentioned, we, uh, we started our industrialization of Perk back in Q4 of 2012, and we were a first mover there. What we recognize, and now everyone else recognizes, is that it is a very cost-effective way to move uh, up the efficiency curve at both the cell and the module level. But at the same time, it's also paying that benefit forward to the, supplier, to the suppliers, meaning those installers out on the rooftops. When you look at the uh, relative cost of the module as a total fraction of the installed cost of the system, that extra power comes out not only as a benefit for uh, uh, solar world in terms of the performance of the module, but really, frankly, it makes for a much better value proposition in those markets where a premium is especially placed on efficiency. Lots of challenges in, in implementing a PERC process. It's more complex. Uh, you're adding some additional process steps. Uh, typically, uh, the geometries are getting smaller, the wafers are getting thinner, and then there is absolutely the challenge of making sure that we're properly integrating that technology together. Because again, as we talked about, as the cells become more efficient, uh, we need to really think about the interconnection strategy that you're using at the module level. As the cells uh, also become more efficient, uh, there's going to be a lot more challenges in terms of making sure that your process controls and your systems and your factories are, are highly automated to make sure that you're maximizing that value performance in terms of the efficiency that you're getting. It's getting that much more complex as you're bringing all those new technologies to bear in the cell manufacturing process. Right. Now, speaking of that cell manufacturing process, yesterday I was at the facility in Hillsboro and you know, walking along the line, one thing that I noticed, I did not see a single step of that process that is done manually. At this point, it seems to be entirely an automated process. Why is a high degree of automation important and what are the impacts on, specifically on quality? Uh, for us, that is an absolute, absolute uh, strategic direction for us moving forward. Automation is not only good in terms of making sure that you're manufacturing in a cost-effective way, but as the technologies become more advanced, as we're really trying to drive the efficiency agenda forward, as we're really trying to eke out every bit, every percent of performance that we can out of the product, accuracy and precision become absolutely paramount. We cannot successfully manufacture without that high level of automation given the complexity of processes that we're running today. When you think about all those thousands of solder points that exist on any given solar world module. When you think about all of the, the uh, high level precision that we need in terms of our film depositions, in terms of our laser patterning, uh, that automation is absolutely a, a critical must have to make the process work successfully. Right, now obviously there's a large focus here on quality and always has been. Can you talk specifically about some of the steps that are taken to maximize quality in the production? Sure, absolutely. Uh, one of the things that we're a firm believer on is that as a vertically integrated manufacturer, you're going to have the best insight into the overall quality of the end product. We specifically design our cell and our cell architecture, the front side layout, the back side layout, the solder points, the connections, to integrate with the exact build of materials that we'll be using in our module factories. That's a clear quality advantage that we bring to the table. That vertical integration means that we've designed the whole value chain stem to stern, not for cost, but for quality and for reliability. Uh, and so from our perspective, that's one of the key things that we do. That automation also frankly affords us another opportunity or another strategic advantage, which is with that automation comes all of the infrastructure, all of the computer systems for us to not only automate the manufacturing process, but also to auto automate the shop floor control systems, automate the statistical process control of the factory. So we have much better insight into not just the output, meaning the power of the cell or the power of the module, but the inputs into the manufacturing process. And at the end of the day, you have to be able to control and manage your inputs to achieve that good high quality and high reliability outputs. Great. Thanks so much for taking the time to explain all of this. Very happy to you, Christian. Thank you.
And this is PV Magazine. This is Christian Roseland at the Solar World Installer Summit in Portland, Oregon.